Hi folks, welcome to this series on covenants. This is one of my favourite um, topics in respect of Bible study. Such a favourite topic that I wrote this Bible study workbook. Now it's not a Bible study book, it's a workbook. So look, it doesn't quite have bits to colour in, but it has bits to fill in. Now I haven't I only published a few hundred copies of this, but if you do want a copy, I can send you one on PDF. Drop me a line and you know I'll happily send you one out, email one out. <clears throat> when you're undergoing a Bible study, really the first thing you should study is the topic of covenants. People often think that a covenant is an act of giving money to the church or a mortgage agreement. These are actually agreements, contracts. They're not covenants in the traditional sense of the word. Because a covenant in the traditional sense is an exchange of persons, not goods. So uh, a house contract is an exchange of property um, and a church covenant is an exchange of money. Um, a covenant is an exchange of persons, not slavery. Why would God name the Bible after a slave treaty? Absolutely not. Um, no, it's, an, it's a free will exchange of persons. A, one way of expressing it that you might be more familiar with is marriage. And the Bible expresses God's marriage covenant with his people. And yeah, I'm holding the cross up because this is the new and everlasting covenant in the blood of Christ. And those of you who are Christians, you're looking at your bridegroom and you, the church, are the bride. Hence, the language is of a marriage and you are in a marriage covenant relationship with God. So, my first chapter is called the Marriage Covenant. Now, before I embark on this, I know that out there in the world, there are many people whose marriages, through no fault of their own, have fallen apart and who are either looking to the single life or looking to be with somebody again. Um, the church doesn't want you to be in a marriage which, has, um, which is basically annulled through no fault of your own. It might be an abusive partner, it might be that your partner has gone off with somebody else or they had no intention of keeping their vows, whatever. There's good reasons usually for most marriages to fail. No, no, very few marriages fail for ridiculous reasons. So, you know, when I'm talking about this, please don't take it personally. I'm actually talking more about your marriage relationship with God than with a human relationship. But let's take you through it, okay? Um, first of all, uh, where, where does a person get married? Most of us think we got married in church and the priest married us. It's a common phrase, isn't it? Oh, that priest married me and my wife or me and my husband. First of all, no priest ever marries a couple. That's a very important thing. Secondly, no couple ever really gets married in church. All right. What happens in the church? Well, first of all, Genesis 2.24. The definition of marriage. Okay. A man leaves his father and his mother, clings to his wife, and they become one flesh. A man leaves his father and mother, cleaves to his wife, and the two of them become one flesh. So marriage is the one flesh union of husband and wife. That's what the marriage is. That doesn't take place in church. What you have in church is this. And you'll you'll find this on page 9 of the workbook, which I'm going to go through all the way. The gathering of witnesses, the exchange of vows, the signing of a register, which is actually a modern thing. And here's the irony. If you get married in a registry office in England, um, the signing of the register isn't the marriage. <laughs> if a couple are in the registry office and before witnesses, they say, I do, they're married. And if you then, and I, I had this from a registrar, I was talking to a registrar who was sharing this with me, and she said that she's had circumstances where they've both said I do, 
and then the groom has ran off for whatever reason and she's pursued the groom down to the local pub or wherever and said I'm sorry but you're legally married you have to get divorced now and he's like I didn't sign a register no you didn't but in the presence of witnesses including myself to registrar you said I do and that I do is the binding factor of a registry office wedding <clears throat> so it's not the register finally a statement by the officiating person for the Catholic Seuss was a priest I now pronounce you man and wife however John Paul II declares in the theology of the body that until the marriage is consummated on the wedding night the marriage is not felt yet constituted in its full reality so the one flesh union of husband and wife that takes place on the wedding night is the marriage okay? that's when a couple get married that's when you're united you have a one flesh union how does this relate to our union with God well um, there is a beautiful word in the Hebrew language um, um, which translates as um, uh, Adam knew Eve and they had a child and Ab Abraham knew Sarah and David knew Bathsheba um, it's also used in relation to Moses knew God okay and the word itself can mean knowledge but also it can mean sexual union of husband and wife and this is where God is so we would look at this as we get married on earth and we're looking at our relationship with our spouse as being like that of our relationship with God but actually it's the other way around God wants this union with us which he says the best possible example of this union that I want with you is found in the one flesh union of a husband and wife so we we would say okay God is using this relationship one flesh union the sexual union of husband and wife to express what he's trying to communicate but no it's the other way around it's God is showing us that this is a symbol of the relationship with God it's the other way around okay um, <clears throat> So God wants us to have this intimate, spiritual, one, one spirit union, as it were, with him. To such a degree that in the writings of the mystics, um, it would not, you would not be able to differentiate between the soul and God. When the soul is present, God is present. People said this about John Paul II and many other saints that I've known of. They say that when that person, when John Paul II was present, they could feel God's presence. This is because there is this union, this spiritual union between John Paul II and God, which is finalized now, it's perfected in heaven in glory. But when he was on earth, it was imperfect. But nonetheless, where John Paul II went, God went okay and that's a sign of this marriage now what I want to look at now is um, the betrothal so you you are being married to God God wants to marry you he wants to have this marriage covenant with you what we call a blood covenant we'll look at that a bit later but this is what God says through the prophet Hosea now Hosea can be so tricky to find so I'm going in my Bible towards the end of the Old Testament, past Isaiah, past Jeremiah, Baruch, Ezekiel, uh, one the prophet Micah, problem is I haven't done this for a while, so I could actually be messing it up myself. I'm going left, I'm going to Amos, Joel, Hosea. Okay, so it's between Ezekiel and Joel, you'll find the prophet Hosea. And this is Hosea 2, Verse 21. Oh, look, I've just found that as well. You see, I should really use an index. Um, but after Ezekiel, you get Daniel, then you get Hosea. Hosea 
Um, or, so, so let's go from Hosea, Hosea 2.19. I'll put 2.21 down. We'll have to make an amendment. Hosea 2.19. I will espouse you forever. I will espouse you in righteousness and in justice. I will espouse you in faithfulness, and you shall know the Lord. In other, in other words, in another translation, I will betroth you to myself. I will become engaged to you. When does that happen? When has God ever, ever betrothed or espoused himself to the church? When has this happened? Well, let's take a look at John chapter 14. In fact, I'll tell you what, everybody. I'm going to build up the suspense. I'm going to stop this video here, which is an introduction to covenants. I'm going to have another video. We're going to talk about espousal and betrothal.